Right, we are at Atlas Spindle Protector. See it behind me. Take three. Check out the other two parts, I'll link two of them. Um, let's just have a quick recap. Hopefully you followed my antics and you'll see that I tried five times and failed five times at making a spindle protector for the uh, Atlas lathe behind me. Now I've learnt from that experience at the time, um, I was fucking gutted. Now, it's not a life changing event but I'm a bit pissed off to be fair. I put a lot into it and to, to fuck up, to not be able to do it is... Um, Fortunately, something that doesn't happen that often for me. I'm practical hands-on. I can normally learn a skill and get on with it and do it reasonably, you know, passable. From passable to fucking great, depending on what I'm doing. But that, forget it, all five of them turned out boners. Um, and I've learnt to angle my compound to the left when you're cutting internal threads. That was one mistake. Check my tool in. Is going to fit. That's number two. Check your tool is actually going to cut the profile because thread cutting tool is a profiling tool. Make sure that it's going to fit. I've learned that. And really, most importantly, number three, make a test piece, make a prototype, have a go first. If it's a skill that you're not familiar with or one you're a bit rusty with or a technique that you don't use very often, you're not sure about it, have a go on a bit of scrap. Make yourself a rough one. The reason I'm making this protector is not because I want a protector. It's because I want to make a drawbar collet chuck type affair. From, I've got a, a collet holder, 5C collet holder. I've got used 5C collets in the milling machine. There's that lot over my shoulder in the mini mill. And uh, I want to use them in that lathe. So I bought an MT3 collet holder and I want to secure it with a drawbar that I'll make and do a video of, but I need to protect the threads. Anyway, I've digressed. Please endeavour to join me. This is number Atlas Spindle Protector, part two, take two. Let's do it. Well, I've mixed up, the, not mixed up, I've not put them in a bag and shook them. <laughs> I've changed the change gears according to the destructions. Look, there's this really old old guide on there and it's got eight tpi we need 48 blah 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 blah, 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 blah. bush done done sorted and whenever you're changing these give yourself plenty of lash look at the gap i've left in that look i'm not running these on a daily that's just for this one operation and i'd sooner have them a bit loose and rattly than uh, tight and binder and actually they run pretty smooth so, there's a dozen and one, or more, there's hundreds probably, of uh, thread cutting videos. This ain't one. But I've been in there, I've done that. We're ready to rock and roll. I've touched the uh, tool on. Die cammed, I've machined this out. Just like in part one. So this is really part two, take two. We're back where we were with a little bit of knowledge. With this compound to the left. A tool that's going to do the job. Everything up there. I've got a bit of wood holding it in back gear because there's a little spring thing that don't work on this. I need to look at it, but we'll. Right. So we're running in back gear. We're all zeroed out. We know that the tool's sitting at 60 degrees. We use a little fish scale to align it with the job. We know we're on height. We know we're all zeroed. We know we're touching on. We're using. Uh, thread indicator on the screw to pick a number and because it's an even thread we can pick any number we like as long as we're on the line we should be good to go so we'll turn on we'll back the compound out five thou 
and we'll wait for a number and take a light cut, hopefully. Until we're clear and then we can back it off, wind the compound across, move it over, wind the compound back. Now we've gone for another five thou cut, we'll get near enough and then we'll hit a number. There, and we'll go for cut number two, nice and gentle. Move the cross slide across, back it out, move the cross slide back. Okay, you drew me several uh, cuts in. We're about there. I'm just going to do one spring pass. I don't know what I'm shouting. And then we're going to try it. So this is quite exciting times for me. Here we go. Nice and light, nothing really happening, just to clean it up. I can feel the actual cabbage moving. I can feel it jump, it like drops when it finishes the cut. So that can't be good, can it? You know. I'm having to nurse this along a little bit to we'll set that back to where we were so we know we're good and I do believe it's time to try it which means sorry I'm going to upset the camera a little bit so fingers crossed this will do it and Carry on. Look at this fucker. You won't believe how difficult this has been. <laughs> it's been arduous. Arduous. Get me chuck, eh? Drop the chuck off. There we go, chuck off. So, I think we can safely say that that fits on there. It's, ooh, it's quite tight. I need a pair of something to uh, undo it. There we go. Just didn't have the force of the chuck wanging it on there. So, we've achieved, haven't we? Sorted. Lovely stuff. We can finish that off now. Okay, so, it's time to finish. We're going to face it off. I've reset the gears so we've uh, got normal feed and had a quick wash up. And we're hoping to uh, finish this off. I'm going to take a few cuts off this face, which I'll probably use the power feed for. And uh, then we're going to reshape the rest of it. So I'll spare you watching all this. And I'll join you in a minute. I'm just going to take one light, last light cut off this, and then, oops, wrong way, sorry. And then I might go in with the chamfer tool. I want to, um, I want to clean up this edge. This front is gnarly, isn't it? But obviously, I don't want to touch the spindle, so I'll look at my tooling options and uh, see what's what. So I'm going to use this little shoulder tool, it's double ended, so this end cuts to the left, that end cuts to the right, and I've flipped it into the front of the, the doings, and that should get me in, just a touch, which is what I want, just a touch, like that, and then I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to angle it, I'm going to feed it back slightly at the same time, just to do a bit of a rough cut, and then I'll go again and I'll just touch it on and I'm going to use my compound just to uh, put it away. How's that look? Yeah, not bad. Not fantastic, but not bad. Now we can cut the taper. I'm really looking forward to this one. So this time we set a carriage, sorry, set a compound to 55 degrees um, and we're going to wind 
across just be doing a normal compound taper cut so we'll come up to the job and we'll make a cut 55 degrees was the uh, standard tool oh, pumping my tripod the angle on the uh, authentic so we're going to emulate that and we're just going backwards and forwards we're using the cross slide to set the cut and then we're moving the compound to cut the taper and we'll work away until we get down a little bit to where we want it and now we'll go with a light cut just to finish off the taper all by hand of course because we're using the uh, compound as a feed so we're using both hands to feed it gently through nice and steady to get the finish that we want and that's that part done the next thing we're going to do is just put a light cut along here just to clean it up um, and we're almost there very nearly almost there so off we go a very light cut now I'm working so close to the uh, headstock I'm really really taking my time being able to be careful so we're just doing a, a clean up pass on that face and we'll run it back again nice little spring pass And that's pretty much the profile of it done. And still, I could do another little shave. Okay, it's just a few more thousand. Just to see how that behaves. Sorted. Of course, we've not quite finished. Um, we need to drill the hole for the, this peg. We've got no way of inserting this uh, well oversized crescent wrench WR19. Came with the Amazon lathe. It's probably for something not related to this. Well, obviously. But I think that'll do the job nicely. So we need to drill a hole just deep enough to take this peg and then we can spin it off and on again to our heart's consent. So I'll pull that off off camera and uh, we'll get into the hole and then we're about there, aren't we? Okay, so what I've done, the camera, there we go, is I've measured halfway between this shoulder and the face here, which is... Uh, that turned out a three quarters of an inch, so we three eighths. We've made a little mark. The automatic centre punch. Now we can just drop it in the machine vise, in this drill vise, and it will sit nicely. We can literally eyeball to make sure that that's in the middle, which it is there, and we can select the right size drill which is going to be bear with that pin measures in at five millimeters so 5.5 will get us there won't it so select a nice 5.5 millimeter drill bit just get it in the chuck and touch off and drill down we don't need to break through we don't want to break through into this inside we just want enough to get a pin get our pin in so try and show you which is not easy we just touch on and we start off and we just go we just yes don't we a little bit more And that 
should be absolutely fine. Let's get on the bench and have a better look. So there you have it. The Atlas Lathe Spindle Thread Protector. Taken far more than I thought it would to make. Um, but overall, I'm happy with it. I've learned some important lessons. If I make another one, which I probably won't, I'll definitely do something about its front edge with the thread there, some kind of relief or something, not sure. Um, I'll make it a little larger in diameter, probably, but I'm not so sure because once it's actually on and in place. That works all right. I'm happy with that. It's discreet. It's not going to get in the way. Um, the tool that I've, I've drilled it out for, sorry, excuse the bad camera work, um, is not exactly the right tool for it, for it obviously, because it's nothing to do with it, but it fits. I'll try and demonstrate that for you. It fits where we need it to. It goes in the hole, and it'll certainly undo it and do it up um, with no problem at all. Most importantly for me, apart from the lessons learned, is I can now get on with the actual project that I made this to do. I didn't make it to make one of these, although it's a nice thing to have. I made it to make another project, which uh, will be my next project up. And that's a 5C college hook on the Morse Taper 3. So I wanted to protect these threads while I use this college hook. Um, I could also use this to, to push it off if I need to. Use the threads in that to eject that taper. But the idea is I'm going to make a drawbar that sits in there and pokes through the... Uh, I won't clear that, but pokes through to, to pull that tie. So that was the idea of making the spindle protector. Next up is the uh, ER32 collet chuck from what really is a milling attachment. I also, I bet I forced that in, oh no. I also need to make a screw in um, tail for that so that it gets ejected from my tailstock on my Harrison lathe. So that'll be a two in one video, which I will dedicate to Joey Collins at Mill Creek Fab. He loves my lathe work. He'll like this one, although it's been a bit arduous. Let me just spin you around. Oh, it's all got on the wonk, it's like a Batman film. So yeah, we got it, didn't we? We, we managed that. Um, you know, took a few goes. I learned that uh, you need to prototype or make a test piece. That's just common sense. I don't know why I thought I could just go straight in and learn a new skill, internal screw cutting and pull it off. I guess I thought I could. Um, check your tool in, check your method. There's always a little bit of this and that can make a fucking huge difference but now we can get on and we can make the drawbar I'm gonna make a little tapered stop so when you back off your tailstock this will itself eject so I can use this in the tailstock on the Amazon for holding um, taps pretty much that's what it's for it gets a better grip of machine taps than a Jacob Chuck thanks for watching thanks for sticking with me if you followed one two Please leave a comment on what you think the final outcome is on three. You know, it's all a learning curve. I'm pleased with the uh, outcome and the little things, quite a sexy little thing stuck on there, isn't it? You know, so big love everyone. As always, a big shout out to everyone in the links below. I won't call them all out. Check on the links below. Please check our Teespring. You can get merchandise. You can get hot rod chicken on tour stuff. Let's spread the love. Uh, like, comment and subscribe. Press the little notification bell as well if you sub so that you get a notification when I put a video up. Have a great one. I'm going to wash up and I'm going to fuck off home. Uh, big love and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.